This handgun and the video for that matter, not really foreseen on my bingo card, but here we are. And the handgun itself, Glock 24, I mean, it's 40 Smith & Wesson, so a lot of newer shooters aren't familiar with the caliber or even heard of it, I mean, seriously. And those uh, like myself and, and some of you who are familiar with 40, you're not shooting it as much these days in most cases and certainly not out of a hand cannon like this specimen here. So it doesn't belong to me. It's owned by a family member. However, it has resided here on the property in a, in a modest underground gun cave for about the last 15 years or so. So we got it out the other day, said, see what we can do with it, let's document it. So what you're about to see over the next couple of minutes, the Glock 24s return to the spotlight, and then it goes back to the cave. Glock 24s are among the rarest Glocks ever produced. From what I've researched, they seem to have been discontinued in the early 2000s. This is a Gen 3 and was assembled in the fall of 2002. It was purchased that year or 2003 from a local dealer. As manufactured, the OEM barrel was just over 6 inches. This one has a Lone Wolf stainless steel barrel that measures at 6 and 5 eighths inches. The 24 is built around the Glock 35 frame, but has a longer slide and barrel. It uses the same recoil spring and guide rod as the 35. This is a tungsten option and I can assume it is from Lone Wolf as is the aftermarket barrel. All of the internals are in excellent condition because it just hasn't had a lot of rounds consumed through it. And I know you'll appreciate the custom porting. Realistically, this is not custom porting, but the slide has a cutout to reduce weight and provide better balance. The 24 was produced with an adjustable rear polymer sight and this one has never been replaced. The Glock long slide models feature an extended slide release. This one protrudes quite a bit and has a sharp point but has not affected my grip. On the other hand, the extended mag release is obtrusive and depending on how aggressive I am with my shooting, I found myself adjusting the grip quite often between shots which is not my typical protocol. In spite of the odd dimensions and nearly resembling a boomerang, this has a really good balance. You do feel the weight leaning just a bit toward the muzzle, but the cutout definitely helps. You would expect the velocity to increase with this longer barrel, but that's going to depend on the manufacturer, and that can even vary within their own product line. Looking at a couple of options we're using here in just a moment, the 180 grain from Federal, we're getting more of an increase than we are the Winchester, and the Winchester in this case is downloaded compared to 165 grain self-defense options. Looking at a couple of 165 grain FMJs that are loaded hotter, closer to JHP velocities, you can see that we're pretty consistent comparing one to the other. Looking at a couple of 165 JHPs, the critical defense is really flat as an increase coming out of this barrel. The gold dot, which is hot anyway, when I shoot that out of a four or four and a half inch barrel, we're getting a pretty good increase out of that one. And the Federal HST, which is one of my favorite loads in 40, either the 180 or 165, we're a little flat with the 180 and the 165 still coming in below 1200. And just a moment ago, I referenced the G24 as a hand cannon. Well, it, it might be in 40 caliber, but it still does not compare to 10 millimeter. These velocities out of the 24 are still coming in about 15 to 20% less than advertised velocities out of a four and a half inch barrel in 10 millimeter. In the backyard shooting pit with this hand cannon, let's get it going. Got the Federal 180 FMJ. Just try not to bump into the camera and tripod with my feet or anything else. Are we in? Okay, looks good. Look at those neck shots. And that's the lone wolf barking. How about that? <laughs> On cue. We in the frame? All right. Really? Am I consistently hitting in that spot? That went over it. That went over it.
Okay, let's try this. The Winchester 165 FMJ. It's not the ammo. I'm trying to get straightened out here. It's standing behind the camera. Tripod. I'm trying to get in the frame. All right. Are we there? Yeah. No, that's uh, that that will work. I think there was one miss just based on the audibles, but I'll take that uh, the way I was shooting from around the tripod. This is one of those things you just want to get in a hurry. Oh, great elevation just to the left. Uh, futile exercise. <laughs> right in the center. This 100 yard line is part of a 300 yard range here on the property and this is an old Civil War supply road that fed into Nashville. So I have to think those guys might have been happy with a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun that had accuracy potential at 100 yards. Let's try some smaller targets. Let me zoom in. I have three discs set up out there. On the left is at 40 yards, right 45, and in the middle is at 65. And no, I'm not going to shoot my own no trespassing sign, which is there in the corner. I'll just tell you right now, I'll be real surprised if I pull this off in 10 shots. Okay, let's go to 40. That might be it. <laughs> Holy crap. All right. <laughs> All right, my day is over.